Hey folks, Mr. Justin here with Secret Weapon Miniatures and another Workbench Wednesday. First, thank you for joining me again. Uh, it's nice to be doing this. And of course, uh, well, if it's your first time joining us, please remember to click on the uh, like, subscribe, the little bell, all the little things you need to do in order to make sure that you uh, follow along with all of our future episodes. Today, I have a lot of fun stuff to do. Uh, this is one of those uh, fun opportunities for me where uh, I've got a couple of projects on my desk. I've got uh, shows coming up uh, that I need to bring uh, competition models into. Um, hey, look at that. Looks like the white balance on me is off today. That's exciting and fun. Uh, but hey, that's all right too. Uh, because what matters is what's going on here, really. So let's uh, start. Let me talk about the projects that I have here. Um, first off, I have woo, is kind of a background project. Uh, this is the uh, Converted Chimera, uh, started a few episodes back, and uh, did it in the uh, kind of blue-gray urban scheme or uh, winter scheme. Um, and I'd like to get to do some work on that today, but what I'm most excited about is I have two projects that I'm weathering up right now. Uh, the first, let me get it off of its stand. Uh, for those that don't know, and I've uh, been surprised at how many folks that, that seems to be these days, uh, says the grumpy old modeler, um, these things on your little Tamiya stands, that's what they're for. So now, in addition to a regular stand, I can now get to all sides of this without having to touch the interior, or exterior rather. Now I'm going to open a window here. See if that light will help. That's what we did with the auto white balance off because I was being goofy at one point. Well, I'm going to worry more about the toys and projects in front of me than I am about whether or not you can see me clearly because like I said that is the least important part of this so here is uh, let's get some let's get a look at some of the detail on this truck too well actually let's not let's come back to the detail on that truck and introduce you to the other project um, so I had uh, come across a uh, coca-cola uh, toothpick dispenser and I said oh that would be a fun thing to turn into a nuclear cola dispenser but I just can't or a toothpick dispenser but I just can't justify it so my friend uh, Ray was kind enough to uh, send me the Coca-Cola dispenser. And uh, I used the uh, 3D printer here uh, to print out some uh, Nuka-Cola signs. Oh, and hang on, look. Toothpicks. Um, it is still a functioning toothpick dispenser. Full of toothpicks. Um, some of my favorite features on this one uh, get it in the light right. Is the uh, scratched uh, vandalism chipping here? Uh, there's also an SWM right here. <laughs> so we've got secret weapon and then uh, M and J for Monica and Justin uh, being my wife. And yeah, so still quite a bit to do on this uh, in terms of the weathering. I want to do all my streaking and whatnot. Uh, I came through recently to uh, highlight some of the chips. Um, add some texture to uh, some of the color here with the uh, acrylics. Uh, and of course, both of these uh, projects were painted entirely with the uh, Secret Weapon uh, miniatures paints. Uh, so we've got uh, a lot of Comet Red uh, on this one and on the truck. Um, one over the darker base than the other, so you can see how it lightens it up a bit. But yeah, so those are the projects. And I am going to start today with the truck. A uh, couple of fun things. So looking at some of the detail here. This is actually, uh, for those that have missed the story in the past, um, this is based on a truck that turns out to be uh, in my neighborhood, or at least uh, well inspired by a truck in my neighborhood. And it's this old uh, gardener's truck. Um, always had the uh, uh, lawnmower and whatnot in the back. And I would see it driving around town. So for years, I got these blurry pictures of this beautifully beaten up old, uh, in his case, actually a Chevy, but I couldn't find an exact kit. And then uh, 
yeah, the first day I take my kid to kindergarten right down the street from our house, uh, hey. there's the truck sitting right there. Um, so anyway, uh, time goes on and uh, finally built up the courage to stop and say hi to the fella and get proper pictures of the truck, uh, show him some of the pictures of the work that I do. Uh, so this is actually based on, a, on something that exists in real life. And when I'm finished with this project, I very much look forward to going uh, to the truck, standing there um, uh, with my new friend, uh, taking a picture of the uh, fake version, the, the remade version in the actual truck. So that'll be fun. But all right, so some of those details, you can see where the uh, striving was removed here. And I'm actually going to color that before I do much of the weathering today, because this needs to be a painting. Um, and I have the little widgets here that would have held it in place. Roop, doop, 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 doop. The doors are different colors. Oh, actually on this side, I should look for some of the things that I'm also happy with. Uh, I was originally going to take this dent and once the model was actually finished, uh, fill it in. Hang on, that's a message from Emily on that, hey? Probably telling me how to fix the lights. Did you turn off the overhead lights? Your face camera is very dark. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I know. No, I did not turn off the overhead lights. Um, so, uh, yeah, I was originally going to finish the model and then take some wood putty and fill it in like um, Bondo. Um, and I may still. Uh, I like this little spot, though. Also here where the... Uh, and this may be so small it's going to be hard to catch in the light without having to adjust. There we are. Um, spots where these holes were are for the mirror you get little circular scratches where everything would have been so I was very happy with that how that turned out and uh, I'd had a question uh, from Jess Rich uh, about the striping here now a couple of things to point out one uh, I overdid the hairspray on the roof uh, pretty badly um, which is why it's big chunky pieces right here. I would have preferred fine stripes. That's why I actually come through and I do this with a blister foam or, or a makeup sponge or something like that. I want to get nice fine uh, stripes. So I'm actually going to repair this with some sponge work as well. Uh, and I'll do that today. Um, now a funny thing, and I hope it shows up here. If you guys can kind of see this pink writing in here. can't tell on the little preview here but yeah if you uh, can see it there and I think you can right there on the camera what that says is re-weld and there's the little line across here and what happened is uh, I flat out forgot to uh, remove the sharpie uh, before I primed the model so now once everything was done and uh, I applied a layer of the enamel varnish over the top of everything um, that bled through uh, so that's gonna be fun the good news is this whole corner is gonna be um, pretty well weathered, but I get to clean that off now because of a mistake I made. Uh, coming around to this side, we still have all of the old mirror holes and whatnot, the different door, um, where I'll do the uh, stripe here in a different color as well, uh, while maintaining it. And uh, yeah, that's it for the exterior fun. But now here is where it gets to be, I think, the most interesting. So let's start with the driver's side. So this is the driver's side of the bed. Give me a second to... Hey kiddo. Hey, hey folks here. I'll go uh, one second for a minute. Even though it's going to be crazy dark still. <laughs> this is my boy Seamus and he is home with a viral throat infection. Uh, so there's a good chance that he's going to uh, interrupt us a couple of times today if he needs something. I said that mm -hmm. was fine. Uh, do you want to say hi to your mama too? She's going to check out. Ooh, uh, well, then, yeah, keep talking. We're able to talk. Ice cream's helping? Mm -hmm. Good. You going to stick around for a while? Sure. You want to hang out or are you going back? Okay, remember after this episode, I want you to take a break from the screen, okay? Mm -hmm. Thank you, son. Maybe then you can come in, hang out at your table, draw, paint, mm -hmm. build models. Draw. We have those uh, petite guys that need to get built. Mm -mm. <laughs> Not today? Well, a draw. Okay, I'll leave it to you. Or leave you to it, rather, because I don't want to keep trying to get you to talk. Oh, that helps put the model back on here. Let's uh, see. And there we go. 
and let's see if I can. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Nope. 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 Yeah, Emily very wisely decided to uh, get the heck out of here and not stick around where there's plague. Um, <laughs> so. Uh, Getting to play with some of this myself. And, uh, yeah. Let's keep focused on the model. So, on the model, this is again the driver's side. I'll try to, uh, I'm going to hide the interior here from you. You don't get to see that yet. It's going to be a surprise. Like Honix Milwanza Ramistis, only totally different. All right, so this is the driver's side, and uh, I've got a couple of dings here that worked out pretty well. A couple of dings here worked out pretty well. Uh, just the scrapes along the edge here, a little bit of weathering on here. And of course, in the back, I've got some good scratches. Right across there, it comes all the way down. This one, it comes all the way across here. So I've got my scratches and a little bit of weathering. So it's not very bad. Of course, in the back of the truck, I've intentionally offset the one side of this. You can see that the, um, the tail light uh, frame is also loose. That's intentional. I'm actually probably going to put uh, tape in here or something. I'm going to make a red tape and hold it on and put a busted out light bulb in there because I like to do those crazy things. So on the back though, I've still got all those chips that I put in after heating it up and, and giving it a whack. But now again, I want to come back to the driver's side. Minor weathering for a 1972. That's a uh, pretty minor. Uh, he's been using the same truck every day uh, since 1972. Bought it when his uh, business launched. Uh, it was a brand new purchase, and he's been using it every day since. Now this is the passenger side. Here, this whole corner is rubbed off. The bottom of the uh, bed is all bent and dinged. Uh, we've got a lot more scratching here, a lot more pits. So these are actual pits that were put in when it was hot. Um, this entire edge is worn off all the way across here. Now, the reason for that, never mind that I have, you know, a good visual reference for this, but when you're doing a civilian vehicle like this, one of the things that's cool is to remember that, uh, well, it's function. You know, we talk about weathering is uh, the effect of the environment on its subject. So here's my uh, happy dappy landscaping truck. But what they're going to do is pull up to the curb do their work, toss it all into the back this way. So it's important uh, to think about that when, particularly for civilian vehicles. Um, that said, uh, the driver's cab is more weathered, which is why I did that reweld here and <laughs> need to remove that text. Why it's more chipped here, why it's more chipped here. Um, and the doorway, uh, the actual door itself has had to be replaced is that well, again, he's been using the same door since 1972. At some point, that door had to be replaced. And when you spend a lot of time reaching out of your door to get out, you do a lot of damage over here. Um, so really thinking about how the environment would have affected this. Um, and that said, now we get to one of my favorite results. The bed. Now, the bed is, is still just the uh, comet red there, and it really shows up as comet red. It's a beautiful color. I'm very happy with that. Um, now, remember, I'm going to put the wood. Is the wood in the box like it should be? Yeah. Let's go ahead and put that wood in the bed. Just for now. So that you guys don't have to visualize it. Oop, I'm missing a plank, or two, or three, or six. 
to the other bin. Hmm, none there. All right, well, I'll find the rest of the wood later. So I'm going to have uh, wood through here. And that said, uh, this is the back. We've got here on the wheel wells, all worn and chipped and dinged up through here, including a hole. And I'll make this nice and rusty with the pigments and the oils later. A little bit on the back side of both, but only a little bit on that back side, whereas the fronts ought to be just dinged to crap because, again, tossing everything in here, it's going to whack into these things all the time. On the back, closest to the cab, lots of scratches. You'll see scratch, 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 scratchy scratch. Maybe. Come on. There we go. Ooh, going for a match carpet ride. There you go. So you can see all the little scratches and everything back here. But only the center is really, really blasted. Of course, then we get to the door itself. I don't know why I put the light away. I'm going to need it for the same reason. And in this case, you can see like everything through here is just, and I'll scoot the wood to this side. Help you visualize how it's actually going to look. It's just beat to crap on the inside. And of course, so many scratches. Scratchy, 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 scratchy. It's everywhere scratchies. So it's still worn off through here, but lots and lots of scratching. I like the scratchies. All right. You, do, you go into the project bin so I can find those guys later. All right. So that is uh, some exciting stuff going on about the project. Um, yeah. Let's jump in. Where do I want to start? Now, this one uh, does not require um, a lot of touch-up, just a little bit of paint work. And I'm going to need uh, engine metal for that, and I'm going to need tire black, of course. Shake a shake a shake a. I'm in a shake a shake a rock and roll band. Do, 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 do. Oh, grab myself a towel. Slap that. Ooh, don't slap this towel on my wrist. Slap that towel in the uh, trash bin. Got put away with putty on it. All right. First, I'm having the sort of day where drinking a Red Bull the size of your face it seems like a good idea. So thank you, Emily, for delivering the Red Bull as well as the pigments. All right. Ooh. Seamus, buddy, if you need me, you'll have to come in. Mimi. This is one of those moments I was talking about. Hey, kiddo, what's up? Um, what do you need? I like my um, first of all, PJ Masks. Oh, you finished the PJ Masks? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're going to come in here and uh, draw? Mm -hmm. Where are you going? <laughs> you're going to go out there and build Lego? My ice cream. Oh, finish your ice cream? Mm -hmm. Okay, turn off the TV, please. Mm -hmm. Thank you, son. He's been sick. My kid is pretty great most of the time. Emphasis on most of the time. <laughs> All right. So let's get started.
brush damp handy dandy little palette here Let's start with engine metal in the bin where I clearly put a lot of engine metal in the past don't need much it's nice to be painting and uh, I am one of those that lives with a mental health diagnosis that has a big impact on my life Lately, I've had a hard time finding joy in any of the things that I normally would. But I find that Bob Ross really nailed it when he said that you know, every day is a good day when you paint. And as long as I can get myself to actually do it, well, my day always gets better. If only my feral again. Don't look at me, Wapples. Don't see my shame. Now, of course, the challenge with knowing that painting would help is sometimes Weasels in your brain just don't care. <laughs> they have no interest in letting you do it anyway. And that's why it's so great to have you folks ready for the Workbench Wednesday. Because I may want to uh, hide under the covers today. But I can't do that. You're counting on me to help you slack off at work. <laughs> at least those uh, viewers in America today. There we are. Phew. Perfect. Right. Here, we get that. We get this. We get that. Oops. I done goofed. Now, one of the important things to remember if you're a uh, new to vehicles and uh, I had to learn this at my first uh, the first IPMS show um, well I'll come back to the story but anyway chrome uh, doesn't rust <laughs> it can flake and rust around it but the chrome itself won't rust so while I've got those chrome components they are going to start shiny and just get dirty. Ah, thank you, Jess, for saying you're glad I didn't stay curled up under a blanket today. Well, that would have been tough to do anyway. Well, actually, that's not true. I could have just stayed curled up under a blanket with a kid, and that sounds especially nice. <laughs> Maybe get us on the floor and invite the dog into the mix, too, and everybody could have just had a uh, nice little cuddle puddle. All right, I need to swap out for a slightly smaller brush. I am very glad to be painting. It truly is a pleasure, and it's always nice to be pleased with the results. Doesn't always happen for me. Goodness knows there are uh, more than a few projects where I've uh, posted in the past like, hey, look how great this is going. I'm super excited. And then nobody ever sees it again. <laughs> hey, kiddo. What do you need? You just coming in? Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah, right now I'm 
actually in the process of selling uh, just about all of the art in my cabinet there. And I uh, reached out to my usual patrons first, because I give them right of first refusal. And, well, uh, I was surprised that uh, a couple of them turned down pieces I knew they'd be interested in. It turns out that uh, that's because they wanted to commission a couple of pieces. Um, so that's another fun way to ensure I actually get stuff done. Is And you know what? That's not going to give me enough contrast, so I'm actually going to reverse it. I'm going to paint these entire black. And then come do the silver stripe through the middle. Otherwise, against the white, I won't get enough contrast. What do you need, kiddo? Mm -hmm. Just give me pats and lovins. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can you give me little cuddles? Mm -hmm. Feeling all right? Mm -hmm. You took your medicine this morning, right? The pills? No? Uh oh. You want some? Kinda. Doesn't sound good, but you know it'll make you feel better. Mm -hmm. All right, give me a little bit, and I will be happy to get that for you, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, we're turning off the TV for now, remember? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Do a fairly good job speaking. <laughs> Just put that down as a second language. Hi, will you please go turn off the TV, buddy? I still hear it on out there. Well, it needs to get turned off, kiddo. I tried. Oh, you couldn't get it off? Mm -hmm. Well, you know how to turn off the PlayStation. I hit the one that turns off the PlayStation and then it hit. Okay. Well, we can just stay on for now, then. So that's not something I'm going to interrupt this one. So now, like I said, originally it was going to be silver with the rubber stripe down the middle, but now it's going to be rubber with the silver stripe down the middle because that silver doesn't give me any contrast against the white. Whereas in the center, I'll have a good contrast. Cleaning off a little bit of excess down here. Wooshka. Mamushka. Hey, mm -hmm. a I'm saying, wait, where's my. Oh, right. <laughs> I took it off. Mm -hmm. There is no stripe there. And that's on purpose. Always funky trying to paint at the right angle to get this on camera for everybody. Yeah, let's get these little buggers. And I will fix the loss of contrast here, since those need to be rubber, uh, with some pigment washes by putting uh, pigment around it to help highlight them with some dusty colors. Making sure I didn't miss any rubber bits. Boop, boop. And I did. Doing that thing again. All right, that is. 
is that taken care of? Let's double check over here. For instance, the top of that is not covered. And uh, over there, uh, looks like I did a better job. Paint set out of here with some neo white. The other thing I'm going to do, um, the uh, red spray paint uh, enamel rattle can I was using to do the uh, interior here uh, got carried away and flooded the thing. Um, yeah, so I'm going to put down a layer of Neo White. This is Secret Weapon Neo White from the mech line. It's a solid coverage off white. You can see. Nice heavy solid color. Not worried about the overspray down there because the bottom is not going to be red or white in any way. I had been using this just as a primer that would have given me a nice base for the bucket seat. There's a front to this, too. So I'll wind up hitting the bottom with a tire black later. Right now, I just want to give that a layer to dry. As much to give it uh, new teeth for accepting more paint uh, as anything else. All right, where to go next is the engine metal. Hey kid, do you need some hot tea or anything? Mm -mm. You're okay with your ice cream? Oh, you have tea, well it's not hot. You want me to warm it up? Mm -mm. Hey Seamus, what's that on your desk? What's that look like? Oh, you take a look. Open it up a little bit. There's a mystery package on the boy's desk. A gift from our friend Matt. Did you figure it out? Give it a smell. What is it? You still don't know? Brownies? Yeah. Matt sent us brownies. Emily brought them over this morning. Pretty great, huh? Uh, some of my paints, sorry. I've got stuff on your desk again. Because I need to clean up the studio again. We are still in the process of organizing all of the various uh, things that we brought back in. Which means that on occasion, my son's desk becomes the flat storage. <laughs> I got it on the bottom there, so I'm going to clean that off real quick. not worried about it being in the recess because of course later we'll hit the recess with pigments and oils and whatnots. So many whatnots. Were you saying that's funny or not funny? Not funny? <laughs> that's fair. 
Seamus will be home with me for the week. And he's already tired of my sense of humor. We're doomed. Send help. <laughs> Call out the National Guard. <laughs> Still not funny. Yeah, but we do all right. We don't do a lot of television, so Seamus and I have been doing a lot of Lego building. Like, so much Lego building. He's been working on his city. I've made a couple of components for that, but not recently, because he talked me into starting a rat rod and has been very, very helpful in finding pieces for it so that I didn't have to do it entirely on my own. And I am very happy with the results so far. Oh, it's not finished. Of course not. Also, if you've been waiting for me to respond to an email, please forgive me. <laughs> I've been busy taking care of the sick kid. Going to aim to get through some of that today. And I'm putting a little silver dock kind of in the middle of each of these. Where the little hook is. Again, it's all going to disappear later. Last but not least, find my weld here by touch, since the whole area there is kind of schmutzy. There it is. And first layer of the light, and then we'll come back with some dark iron layer. There we are. All right, now let's put uh, your ah, mixing up my paints. There, I think you're coming, Brad, right? Oh, nope, you and the old pin. Go ahead and pull out the uh, mech rack. Again, with thanks to my buddy Mike for the excellent little rack here. There you are. That's right, the second time. Ooh. One of the missing pieces of wood for the truck bed. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'll be here all week. Tip the veal. Try her waitress. I've had her. She's great. Mm, let's put this on top of some brown. So creamy. So delicious. It's secret weapon paint. Whoop, whoop. What, you don't want to eat the paint? That's probably for the best, all things considered. So like I said, the two doors, because they're different, I'm going to treat their striping differently. Start by not holding my ferrule again. It's a bad habit. I've been in for a long time now, and I'm trying to get back out of it. Also best if I pull instead of push. Got it all over the bottom. That's all right. I can fix that. I know a guy that knows how to paint. Specializes in bodywork. Make it look good as used. Very, very badly used. Yeah, I probably should have put down a layer of white first since I'm doing this right over the tire black, which is also a gloss. So it's not really going to like having the paint go right over the top of it. Well, I'm brush for that. Let's clear this out right here with this one. Doing it again. Oh, look, that's better. 
Almost like I have so much more control. Oh, hold on, my friend. So there you go. We've got the red stripe on this side. And everywhere else, the silver and rubber. Hey, you're going to paint. Mm -hmm. Awesome, monkey. There we are. So, on the uh, vehicle, something to notice. Um, I did put down a layer of white. Uh, and it was the Neo White that I put down uh, before I put uh, over the hairspray for the first layer. Um, and before I did the red. Now, this, of course, helped me get a, a better red. Um, a more true red color. Um, again, if I'm spraying it over black, it's going to change the color. Uh, particularly when you're airbrushing and you're doing a thin layer, uh, the color you put underneath it makes a big difference. Uh, it's why I tend to shade my uh, Blood Angels with purple. You know, using the opposite color uh, does a good job of tying in colors elsewhere. Um, yeah. Anyway, but then when I put the yellow over the purple, obviously I get a very different color. It's a nice shade. Um, so in this case, doing it over the white, it does a couple of things for me. First off, well, like I said, I get a more true red. But second, so all of these little highlights that you see here on these chips, all of these highlights, and I mean all of these highlights. Beautiful little outline here. I'm not responsible for any of that, not by hand. That's all the result of careful application with the... Uh, um, what I actually use for a lot of this is an old uh, uh, airbrush needle. This is one of my old, uh, looks like a Grex needle to me. Could be a harder steam back, but that looks like a Grex. It's got to be a Grex. Um, so I'll use that very, very carefully for these little scratches. So when we look at hairspray, I still say that even in careful application like that, it's still a semi-random technique because it can get carried away. Um, or you can get carried away with the hairspray and not get the results you want due to over-application. Um, so fortunately, that's not a problem I had anywhere else. Um, but on the roof, yeah, you can very much see the giant puddles that had gotten left in place. So I'll have to repair that with some paint, which I'll do here in a minute. But all of those highlights, again, all of that happened through the careful application of scratches, and I don't need to worry about coming in with a different red. Um, black and white will pull in the colors around them. So the fact that I've got a dark color, that those rust colors that I started with in this case, not a black, true black, um, but I've got those rust colors coming through here, that thin line of white. So tiny. <laughs> Somewhere, trust me. It's there, it exists. It's not just in my mind today. Here we go. I give you tiny scratches so it's outlined and again because I've got that white line on both sides it pulls in the color it adds that depth it adds the highlight I don't need to come back and do diddly bump guess I can and in a couple of cases I might um, only because again once I start applying the weathering it's gonna knock the color on all of this way down so again here's our truck we now have the stripies in place. And the very different weathering on both sides. So now let's get to fixing that stuff going up on top here. All right. I already have my rust colors out. So I'm going to get old rust, not tire black, or rubber, or old oil, not yet anyway. <laughs> Dark iron I'll need later. Here's my orange rust. Here's my yellow rust. I'm also going to bring out the uh, engine rust, um, which is the translucent pink. And I'm going to talk about that. This actually exists for the... Uh, undercarriage of uh, cars like this. Um, but I know that uh, Jess Rich, who has joined us today, uh, does wonderful work with um, using that as a highlight for flesh on miniatures. 
a uh, very talented painter. If you don't know her work, I recommend checking out uh, Brush Mistress on Facebook. Um, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful uh, artist. Um, we have a lot of her uh, originals here on the wall as well. Um, the whole family's a big fan. And uh, yeah, always, uh, always work for sale. I highly recommend checking her out. Now, on that note, I will be right back. I at least have to um, go turn off the TV and the PlayStation for Seamus because the sound of it in the background is starting to drive me a little, you know. And I'm already a little, so. Uh... <laughs> Uh, you know blister foam is, right? The black foam that's like in the army bags and stuff. And I use it when I'm making models a lot of the time. Could you help find some of that? I couldn't find any in the bin in the garage. And uh, my drawer in here is empty, but I really need some blister foam right now. Could you go look for some, please? There might be some in your room because you have my army bags in there. Sorry about that, folks. I went to, uh, well, look for the uh, blister foam. Uh, which I don't have in my drawer, um, which is just weird. I'm not sure how that much blister foam goes missing, but, uh, you know, life is a mystery. Uh, yeah. All right. Um, so Seamus has helped me out on that. Also decided uh, my good friend uh, Eric Falskin of Every Little War um, brought over a bottle of uh, whiskey made in a Kofé still um, that is, well... It's whiskey for breakfast time is apparently what it is. So whiskey and Red Bull for breakfast. Uh, cheers to the other champions of the world. And uh, yeah, let me get started here. It would be best for me to start with the blister foam. So let me see what else I can do here for a minute. Mm. That's not ideal, but I'll take this section. Thanks, man. You're awesome. You're like, yeah, I know it. <laughs> oh, you're weathering up a uh, police car. Mm -hmm. Right on, dude. All right, that's enough. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. It's fun, though, isn't it? All right, so I've got my little bits of... Uh... Mm -hmm. hmm? <laughs> you got to get yourself, too. It's dark, but you need to do it where everyone can see you, just to be goofy.
There you go. <laughs> All right. I'll get back to it, kiddo. Mm -hmm. Let's see here. I need my colors. And I'm looking at the top of this, and I'm thinking about the uh, vehicle. I can pull up the pictures, and I wish I had them queued up so that I could share them with you right now. Um, but looking at that, I'm actually going to start with uh, two colors. I want my brown rust, which I don't have up here, of course. Fortunately, as you guys can see from the last of the mess that I'm sorting behind me, I know where my paints are. Such a nice change to start having everything uh, where you expect it to be for a change. Uh, this remodel has gone on for like a year in uh, fits and fits and starts. All right, so I am taking uh, old rust and brown rust here. Today I'll soak my palette in some isopropyl and clean it out. Oh, check you out, dude. I'll show you a trick for the windshields later. Mm -hmm. So it makes it look uh, like it got dusty even though there were uh, windshield wipers. Mm. Mm -hmm. Or maybe we need to do that now for you and the audience. Would you like to do that? Mm -hmm. Totally change topics here for a minute. It's relevant. And this is, after all, what Workbench Wednesday is about. Questions from the audience. Normally, I like to plan them in advance. But in this case, hey, we're going to rock this out. One second, please. YouTube.com slash Secret Weapon Miniatures. That would be the missus uh, looking for a link to the broadcast. All right, so this is the... Uh, truck that Seamus was uh, just weathering up behind us here, and uh, I am going to fiddle with it a bit and show folks how to make more realistic, um, what do you call it, uh, mm -hmm. windshield wiper pattern, but the first thing I need to do is clear off some of this paint, just in the windshield of course, mm -hmm. I'm not going to change the rest of your work. You'll check to see if that's anything but a parcel. Remember, if there's somebody there, come get me. <laughs> Nobody there? Just a parcel. Thank you, son. We got to see who what? Hmm? You gotta talk for that one, I don't follow you. You know the um tournament that's coming up? Oh, you wanna take it to the IPMS show we're doing this weekend? Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, we will be at the IPMS Silver Show or IPMS Silver Wings show this weekend, uh, in Sacramento at Town and Country uh, Town and Country Lutheran Church. I uh, forget the exact address, but it's out by the uh, Alta Arden area. Uh, we will be there with the booth, and of course I will have uh, too many models uh, in the competition to even begin to count. All right, so the first thing we're going to do mm -hmm. is lay tape, not on just onto the windshield, but up and over it. You want to cover the area behind it. Mm -hmm. But for now, we're going to... There are different ways to do this. This is by far the easiest way to do it, in my opinion. Uh -huh. Yes, son. No brownies right now. You need to eat some of your good food first. All you had so far is ice cream. And the doctor said, hey, enjoy your ice cream. So, we're enjoying ice cream for now. So, I'm going to take that. Trace my window. All right. So, that's my window. Now, you can get realistic. I don't think there are actually... Oh, there are wipers on here. Okay. So, I have a wiper. I can measure the wiper. Here. To here. And 
Oh, this one comes up from here. So they're both coming. See, this makes a difference. Ha ha, what a great example, yay! So look for your wipers, because in this case, in the case of the police cruiser, you'll notice they're both coming from this side, which means that our pattern is going to be different. And in this case, I'm gonna to switch to one of my pencils. La -de -da -de -da -de -da -de -da. Choo 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 choo. So that's going to be our pattern, and I'm kind of making it up. But I am now going to remove it. And the reason I'm removing it is I'm going to cut a mask out of this, a quick, just a quick frisket out of this. And I don't want to score the plastic. So I have a set of lines. Are you watching now, Seamus, too? So I have this set of lines. So what I'm going to do is trace the section of that that I like. And I'm going to have it come up this way and over. Because I imagine this one is doing something like that. And this one is doing something like with an overlap this. So that's my line. But I'm going to have a little gap right here where that overlap would be. Just to make it more interesting, you know? So... I am going to cut along the line of the windshield, cut a nice interesting curve up there, my nice interesting curve to here, an indentation. Uh, where else have I got? So that is all of those. That's my indentation, so I come across here. I'm going to start removing these pieces, because remember, I am doing a negative mask. I almost screwed that up myself. Which means the sections I remove are going to get paint. So I need to remember to take a look at where I'm at. And remember that I can very easily do this. It's actually much easier than I was making it because I'm doing a negative mask. I don't have to be delicate here, you see. I just have to be accurate at the edges. Priorities for me this week is to get our Cricut Air installed and up and running, and that'll be fun. Cut all this stuff for me. Well, not this specifically, because mm -hmm. doing this in Illustrator would actually be a lot more work. <laughs> You're going out? No more screen time, buddy. I've already told you. Mm -hmm. Because you had enough. Seamus, mm -hmm. you're taking a little break from the screen, buddy boy. We have those four petite guy kits to build. We have models you can paint in here. I'm about to help finish up your uh, model here, or this little thing. Now I'm hoping, because I should not have cut this line until it was on. And that means the whole piece right there is going to come off. And I'm going to have to place it on the windshield, which is going to be a pain in my butt. Because I forgot I was making a negative mask and not a positive mask. So yep, there it comes. All right. So all burnished back to itself. I'm also pushing and feeling from the wrong side. Come on, come on. 
Oh, 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 come on. Oh, no. But at least now I have a nice, uh, easy way to identify where it should go. All right. Oh, actually, which is all I need. I was right the first time. Silly Justin. Mm -hmm. I know, Seamus. I haven't actually used this technique in so long that I'm forgetting my own stuff. So yes, I am now making simply a positive mask. I was right the first time. And you can see where it's going to hit and how. And then what I need to do Really burnish that down. Now, I don't want to get this paint on the rest of your model, right? Mm -hmm. So we're going to mask it off with some more paint, uh, more paint, more tape. And I'm not going to do the world's best job, but you let me know if that's okay. Try to get some... Uh, dust on the sides of the car here. Actually, that, nah, I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. Mm -hmm. I can't just phone it in, not even for a quick little demo piece. Alright, that is at a minimum the mask that I would want. Hey, stop it. You are inanimate. Don't uh, argue with me. Airbrushes are working today, he says, optimistically. So this is light dust. So it's kind of a dirty color. Just gonna put a few drops of that in the airbrush. get a brush wet. Just mix it up right in here. I don't want a lot of water and I don't need a lot of paint. It's a good way to do it. So now that I've got paint coming out here, I am going to give it a light dusting with light dust. Home windshield, very light. And I'm going to make it a little heavier in the corners. Top and bottom. Clean out my airbrush immediately. that dry for a few seconds. Would you like to do the honors, Boyle? Mm -hmm. You want to peel off the mask? Mm -hmm. Why don't you peel off that mask and then I'll show everybody what it looks like. So you want to be careful because you don't want to try and you want to try to avoid scratching off paint from the windshield. It gets to be a bit tricky. Oh, you want me to do it then? Oh, because you scratched the windshield, I see. So that is a trick. You can see where Seamus' fingers scratched the uh, paint off the windshield because obviously we're not putting a varnish down on top of clear plastic uh, or it wouldn't be clear anymore. So you just want to pick up a corner and away you go. I'll get... Uh, the light diffused here so that you can more clearly see. Oh, what can I stick in there? A pen. Not bright enough. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I don't want to give them advertising. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, here. 
Oh, that's it. All right. Well, anyway, you can hopefully see that contrast there between the clean and dusty portions. Yeah, it's coming through. So now you have a windshield that's all clean in the middle where the windshield wipers would have gotten it. What do you think of that? You like it? Oh, now you want to do the rear one? Well, take a look at your model. So they didn't put a um, wiper back here, but we know they would have one. So you can decide if you want it to be from the top or the bottom, but let's do a single one. Yeah? Just one? Okay. You're going to try the technique for getting the mask ready? Well, all right. Well, then hold on to this because I'm going to get back to the other model for now. All right. But if there's another technique I can show you, buddy boy, let me know. Same thing, you kids out there. I love your questions. It really is my favorite part of the job. Let's get back to this thing for the moment. Tape away, drawers are closed. Spong. I love my um, blister foam for this. I'm actually finally running out after years and years and years and years. Um, yeah, I need to see if I, I have any left. Hopefully I still have uh, a few bags of the warehouse. So, I am going to get just the corner of my spong here wet. Tap it off of my towel. And you can see how it's giving me dots. And I can do that right here on my nail. Also, yes, it is a fun way to do nails. My kid can't wear nail polish to school. It's true of students and faculty until fifth grade. Part of their curriculum. But we enjoy, all of us, getting a chance to uh, get our fancy nails on. Well, I have to admit, it doesn't normally include rust. Yet. Now that I think about it, I'm going to have to rust my fingernails. Maybe that's how we'll go out today. <laughs> Using the hairspray technique on your nails. Hey, let me know if you want me to draw you a bath or something too, kid. Mm -hmm. I know not now. I said, let me know. I'm also going to put a little more emphasis here around my re-weld line. And the bright pink text. <laughs> a little smoother through here, a little heavier. Again, that, but not the door, would be totally schmutzified. So there we go. It's not as bulky now. Um, the chips aren't as heavy. Uh, I get the effect of the lines I was going for a little more clearly now. I'm just going to add another one right there, in fact. Boom. Going to make that a little wider. A little wider. And a little dirtier. <laughs> Can you see? Oh, you're carving it off now. And I'm going to do that one more time, in fact. Coming this way. So now that's a little more cohesive. Heavier weathering here at the back that I wanted. A little more. There we go. So touching up the roof here. 
Now I'm going to take some. Where'd you go? There you are, my favorite color, Old Rust. About as much work went into uh, this one color as the entire mech line. <laughs> it, uh, there's a chance I feel actual strong feelings about this color. Um, so I always felt that uh, other Rust sets on the market uh, really lacked that deep mahogany purple mm, that you see on old uh, trellis bridges and and really on, on a lot of rust old rust especially has a lot of beautiful purple in it and it wasn't just that we had to get the color right but we had to get the performance right so all of our colors were performance formulated i knew not just what color i wanted but I had ideas for how it would be used or should be used, at least in context. And uh, so that meant that we're, like our new line of paints, it's going to include a maximum of two pigments in every paint. Uh, and you normally don't want more than three, uh, just based on volume in the paint and all of that. Um, this one includes six different pigments, and it absolutely has to in order to get the effect that I want. Uh, this is a, uh, the weathering line is still being produced for us uh, by the wonderful folks at Reaper Miniature. So Anne is handling the production of this for us and still says it's the most complicated paint she's ever had to make. And it's also one that uh, nobody else in her lab gets to make for us. <laughs> Because even if you follow the formula, there's a lot of times when you have to tweak it. And it might be surprised by what it takes to get that color right. All right, so I wish I had a uh, before and after on the roof here. Um, but that should start to give you a clear impression that it's, you know, see all these big dots that we still have there. They're now starting to disappear. We're getting a lot more rich color. A lot more visual interest. So I'm going to come in here and do some of that too here. And in the area down here around it too. Well, it's almost there. Let's make that a little heavier. Yeah, I'm pretty satisfied with that. Now I'm going to come over here though and make this a little more interesting. And then cheat. Shh. Totally don't do that. Hey, did you want to build one of those models? <clears throat> Need something to paint? Need a chicken butt? You want screen time? Yeah, I understood that, but it's not happening, buddy. You know that. I'm done with this in about 45 minutes. We'll find something to do after that. Probably Lego. All right, so... Getting a feel for what's going on. Always happy with the scratches. I like scratches. I like scratches a lot. Especially with how these turned out. I really hope that's visible. My preview window is very, very, very small. I'll find out how to fix that for next week. Yeah, you can see them. You can totally see them. All right, so let's take a look at the bed then and see if there's anything I want to do to this before I get uh, distracted. I 
but I really don't think so. I'm very happy with the bed so far. I'll have to do the undercarriage at some point, but I'm not doing that yet, believe it or not. And that's why all the components are apart, is I can still paint them uh, individually. I can still put everything together in the, when it's done. But that way I can focus here, get that all sealed up, and then come back to this. So, just keep working on the cab then. Uh, at this point, any questions before I get carried away doing more rust? Because, I mean, anybody who's uh, watched my stuff before knows that I can do rust pretty much all day. Those of you that are new should understand that I am legitimately obsessed with rust. Um, my wife pointed out a while back that uh, it's orange heat. That's why that's wrong. When she met me, um, the canvas paintings I was doing at the time were all uh, rust studies on canvas. And I have some of those in the garage. I've actually sold a couple of my canvas rust studies in the last couple of years. I would love to make more. But mostly I want to do uh, pitches, so triptychs and whatnot. I've got a seven panel piece in the living room that I painted for us, and I'd love to paint a different version of that for somebody else, but it's hard to find people to commission canvas. Whereas, if you're interested in owning a piece of my work, definitely check out uh, my Facebook page. Um, I will be listing, uh, well, just about everything in the cabinet behind me. That includes some of the pieces folks will be surprised to see go. Um, the 66 uh, Caddy, for instance, um, the Flying Restaurant uh, is for sale. Uh, the usual, uh, if you have to ask, and can't afford it rule applies to that one. Serious offers only, please. So now I'm coming back with my orange rust. And I'm very gently applying just a touch. And you're hurty, you need some new tea? You want some medicine? Yeah, all right. Let me get the orange rust down right here. What do you think, kid? Doesn't it look more interesting now with the orange on it? I can't see anything. You can't see anything? Well, you gotta come over here. You can kick anything on the floor over there. If I was silly enough to leave it on the floor, you can just be like, Rawr! Don't go out of your way to kick my stuff. <laughs> Thank you. But see, now we're putting the orange on there and it starts to look more interesting. Now watch this. See this section right here? All right. So right there. Already more interesting, right? All right. So let me go get you your medicine. Folks, excuse me for a minute. I'm going to get the boy some uh, ibuprofen.
And I'm back, folks. Thank you for your patience. Oh, well, thank you, Jess, for the kind words. I am definitely uh, in pursuit of my happy place here. I lost my sponge for the orange, and that's fine. I'll just use a new one. Because this needs just a little love. We'll put some happy, fresh rust here. So the more fresh the rust, the lighter it's going to be. Do you want to have me move stuff, and you can pull your chair right around or something? Or just come stand over my shoulder? Doesn't make me nervous when you do it. I like it. Come over. Okay. So. And you'll see a lot of the time that if I'm uh, not happy with the application, particularly if I think it's just a little bit too heavy, uh, I'll tap at it with my finger. Um, I've heard a lot of the time that, oh, don't get your fingers in the model, you know, the oil and the paint. And I'm just going to say that if your fingers are that oily, go wash your hands. You're filthy. I'm touching my models and my hands all the time. Ah. Oh, because you have to chew these medicines. And that sucks right now, doesn't it? Oh, dude, I'm so sorry. There's no way around that. I mean, I can give you swallow pills. Yeah, you like those even less. <sighs> Need a hug? That's your mama. Granted, it's about groceries. Reminded me to get groceries. And then the only numbers that can get through do not disturb, of course. And uh, she knows he's sick, so I kept it on. And all right, so there we go. So the roof, I'm I'm really starting to be happy with the roof. It uh, it has a lot of life and a little texture to it. No screen time, kid. Please stop asking. I told you, at least until I'm done with the broadcast. I know. We'll do something together after that. But no screen time right now. You've had a lot. Well, actually, you know what? That's silly. Have your screen time now. When I'm done with the broadcast, then you need to stop. Because then we can do something together. Yeah. All right. Please take your other pill. I know it sucks. Yeah. You got to. I need you to do it. Can I tell you a trick that I do sometimes? Take a pill. You need to take it, buddy. Everyone here agrees. They're all watching. They, they know you're going to do it. Got to take your medicine to feel better. Come on. I know it's going to suck. You got it. You got it. You got it. Spinjitsu surprise. <laughs> there you go. Oh. I love you, little bear. I know. I'm sorry. Have your tea. And you'll have plenty of time for some game or an episode of PJ Masks or something. But then when I'm done, I'm coming out, and I'd like to do Lego again or a board game. All right, so like I said, I'm just adding a bit of life, a little warmth to my rust here. And again, everywhere that it's fresh. Like young rust, fresh rust, it's going to be okay. more in the orange and yellow range. Yes, sir? Can I watch some good news ever soon? No. Mm -hmm. There we are. Very happy, very happy. Big hugs from uh, Jess Rich, Seamus. All right, so this is the yellow rust. And I'm just going to add a little extra warmth here and there, particularly at the back of this. 
And this is another one. We talk about uh, formulating the secret weapon paints for performance, not just color. Uh, the yellow is a translucent. It's actually in a translucent base, a clear base, I should say. Uh, and I had someone comment once that the coverage for my yellow wasn't very good. I was like, well, yeah, that, that's on purpose. Um, but realize that uh, if you're not thinking about it as a rust, you're just thinking about it as a yellow, that sure enough, it probably does not have good one coat coverage because it was never meant to. It was meant to add warmth and life to rust, which is why a color like the um, engine rust, which is a translucent salmon color, uh, also makes a good uh, flesh tone uh, for someone like Jess Rich, who does proper art. So it comes out of here. You see how it just really, really thin. When I'm not watering my brush, I'm going to try to brush off completely, stretch this part out. See, so this is another one. It's in a translucent base because this color is actually designed. I've probably got enough right here to do it to be the final bit of warmth that you normally find um, well, pretty much exclusively in the undercarriage or um, in old cars with metal components, uh, heavy metal components in the engine compartment. And what I'll do is I'll do this as a glaze. And you'll see it adds just just that right sheen. Blends all the other rusts together nicely. Warms everything up a bit. And you'll see I'm not thinning it at this point. My brush is damp, but just pulling it off the paper. Pulling it all the way down across my rust. Even the sections I'd not variegating. And I can, in fact, I'll get another drop over here. This one will thin just by getting my brush wet. Damp. Now, see on this side, thin that out, spread it around. That'll help blend the white together too. Over on this side, I'm focusing mostly on the back. Get a little bit more of it. A little more of it. And in one direction so that any streaking is intentional. Clean my brush. Do some more intentional streaking. And again, so far this is all acrylic. I know I said uh, initially we were going to do oils and pigments and everything, but then I looked at the rust. I wasn't happy with the rust. What are the odds of that? I had to make rust rustier. Mind blown. Thank you again, Eric. Hmm. A fine breakfast, a fine breakfast. The other spot, I'm actually going to come back and apply some engine rust real quick. I'm going to start doing this with the smaller brush. And in this case, I'm just taking the brush a little bit on there. I'm going to apply it straight on here. Now I'm going to get my brush damp again. I'm drying, getting most of that water off of there. Spread this around, clear some off of my brush. I'm going to bleed that into a line a little closer. To surround Right like that. I know when it's wet, it's going to be a little harder to see. But there we go. That is good. All right. I did promise pigments. 
and oils, but I don't think we're going to do oils today. But we can certainly do the pigments. Igor, bring me the pigments. Before I do that, I'm going to take uh, a little of the engine metal we got out earlier. Mix it up a bit. Get the uh, tail light enclosures. I'll tail light enclosure it up. Make them shiny. So shiny. Bring your leaves, but they will never be enough. Tail light's too tough. All right. Pigments. Pigments, 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 pigments! Rust orange. Green earth. Finish him! Oh, wrong. I mean rust brown. Rust red. Violet. Yellow Earth. Where's my dark earth? Dark yellow, that's the one I meant. That's totally what I meant. Hobo Joe! I did not forget about Hobo Joe. Dark Earth! I'm gonna pigment the crap out of this. Alright, I probably won't use all of these pigments, but I like to have my options. All right, first of the rusty colors. The intermediate colors. The simply dirty colors. You're so dirty. I don't even know where to start. Yeah, I'm not sure. All right. I need a palette knife. Palette knife! Go! All right. And my cups. If I can't find the cups now, it's going to be sad because I grabbed them just before the show. I'm going to start with Yellow Earth and a Green Earth. So, in this case, um, as I often, 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 often do, I am going to uh, make washes. Uh, in another episode, you'll get to see me apply pigments as a sprinkle, uh, because I will be looking in that case very much for, I did this backwards, I recommend putting the isopropyl in first because it's easy to over apply. And that way if you get too much, you can always uh, dump some out. Uh, but yes, uh, to get the texture, and I will get that texture with pigment uh, by sprinkling that over the pigment fixer. It will stick, it'll dry, it'll clump. It's, oh, it's very exciting. I guess that I might get a little too excited about rust sometimes. Well, pigments in general. I am looking for, I actually need to clean out my brush stuff. I don't know why is there a toothbrush in here? That belongs over the other cup. True story. Oh, no, it's too big. Ah, perfect. 
So I'm going to mix this up. I'm going to get isopropyl in my hand and start melting. Oh, no. There we go. Mix this up. All right, now I'm in the danger zone. Because <laughs> I need to add more isopropyl. But like I said, it's very easy to overthin these. All right, now the word of warning. The most important thing I'm going to say about working with these washes. There is nothing, and I mean nothing, better at striffing iso or model or paint off of models than isopropyl alcohol. Particularly nothing safe. Isopropyl is both safe, readily available, and um, really super great at stripping acrylic off of models. Oh, another boy was coming in. So I am making my washes here with isopropyl. I prefer that. Um, I have had a lot of practice with that. It was, for a long time, the only thing that was available. Uh, now there are, you know, a couple of companies making uh, enamel pigment fixtures that brush on enamel pigment fixtures, which is what you would want to do, because you don't want to spray varnish over this. You can. I've got a video of me doing it, but it's not ideal. So what I'm going to do, um, and the reason I chose the earth colors, is I want to start... Uh, unlike the uh, wheel rims and whatnot, just a bit of color. So I'm going to tap and let gravity do its job. And that means it's coming right for you because I'm going to put this on my handy dandy holder. Mm, I'll still hold it and turn it for you because you need to be able to see. See, here's an example of one where I over thinned the green earth. John, if you're watching, I'm sorry. I did not mean to waste any precious, precious, precious green earth. But what you're not going to catch me doing is uh, brushing. Because brushing means stripping paint. Which I've done right here already. No matter how careful I was being right there, I've already stripped some. Give you an idea of how effective this is. So this red, again is uh, enamel spray varnish or enamel spray um, bridal cam. Uh, this is the white that's a big old clump that was there from earlier. I'm going to take boop, teeny drop, boop, boop, little bit, little bit, little bit, come on. There we go. That is more than enough. I am going to grab a big scuzzy brush. Give it a second. Oh, that's enough. Don't have to soak that for 48 hours or 24 hours or whatever crap it is this week. Everything comes off. Everything comes off. A little more isopropyl. Let that soak for a few more seconds. And then you'll see everything's come off. All right. That soaks for just a few more seconds. I will hit the sides again here more carefully so that I don't get this effect again. Hit it with my yellow earth. Get that under here. This is what I was talking about to help define things in here. Now I'm going to put the yellow earth around them. And all over the bottom of this door. Now I need to let it dry because I can see spots where I'm moving the paint. If it shows up. Nope, can't quite see the white, but I know it's there. So I do the other side. All right. Letting it slide down. That way it does the work and I'm not brushing it. Hit the bottom and you watch it go. Hit over here. Wheel well. Wheel well. All right, and I don't want to let the other thing soak too long because I would never let something soak.
pretty much down to plastic again. And we can do that much more easily, of course, with non-enamel paints. Even the stuff on the bottom here is coming off. You can see the original plastic coming through just because it got wet on the bottom. <laughs> and this is Krylon. So there you go. Even with just a couple of brushes, I can clear the plastic off of Krylon. Or, I mean, clear the Krylon off of plastic. Patrick Keith did a great step-by-step uh, -step photo tutorial where he took uh, X-Wing models from Fantasy Flight. And uh, because those are all the same enamel, the same process, the same everything, it's a great uh, experimental model to use for that. Um, and... Uh, did the you know 24 hours in this 48 hours in that break fluid uh deer guts or whatever the heck it is next week um but then it was 15 minutes or five minutes or something and i said and it was the only one that stripped anything off and he's like so stop telling me that i need to use something else oh hi pooch i get everybody on the show today because i left the door open so i could hear the kid so this is miss ophia i know that uh, she's been on the show before uh, because the last time i mentioned her um the audience went nuts and said, oh, stop the show and introduce us to your dog. All right. Let's see how our pigments are doing. What, Smoochie Pooch? You going to talk to me? Everyone would love to hear you sing. You're a beautiful singer. No. So we've already got our, uh, it's already dry. It's why I like the isopropyl, it's dry so quickly. So we've got a nice dust line through here. We've got our dust. Oh yeah, this is looking good. Teeny tiny preview is teeny tiny. I'll fix that next time so I can actually see what I'm doing. But yeah, you can see all the dust around this and how it really helps those to stand out. I'm just gonna overemphasize, or not overemphasize, reemphasize a couple right there. And then I'm going to pick a few selective spots where I want this pigment to be for now. Get that out of the way. First, stir it up. With the washes, you do want to stir them up regularly because the pigment will settle very quickly. Once you stir it up, give it a wipe, though, because now your brush is going to be saturated with the pigment itself. And it can surprise you. So, boop. And I'm going to let gravity... Handle anything that happens next. Hmm. Well, that's all right, too. Seamus went out to uh, watch a show, and I suddenly realized that the sounds I was hearing in the background were not related in any way, shape, or form to that show or any other. But uh, then I heard uh, the telltale clickety-clank of uh, a Lego uh, game character uh, dying. And yeah, it's fine. If he's playing one of our Lego games, that's okay, too. Poor sick kid gets to hang out with me for a week and not get all the screen time he wants. Granted, I do look forward to uh, getting back to my rat rod today. Oh, I'm starting to uh, get so far behind on email, it's uh, a little frightening. So I'll have to carve time out uh, at some point. So what's great, too, again, is because the isopropyl dries so quickly is that a lot of the time, by the time we come back around, the area I was just working on is dry again, which is nice. See? Now, unfortunately, here, I got this little cooling. I don't like it. One challenge with using isopropyl um, is that because it is good at dissolving ice, uh, acrylic, um, 
it has a more permanent bond than making that wash with water would. So I may not be able to get that off. Today I'm lucky. Uh, but it can actually bind to that acrylic in a way that you did not mean for it to do and really surprise you. So just be aware when you're working again with isopropyl on your model anytime, it's, it's a risk. Oh, definitely in there. Now here's a fun one. I am taking this to, or plan to, hope to, take this to a couple of shows this year. And I do not intend to put the plastic windows in. Uh, with the tip of the hat to Jason Eaton, um, he asked me, he pointed that out to me at one point when I was working on the uh, Millennium Falcon, um, asking if he had uh, a source for uh, vacuum formed windows and sort of the great chunky things. You know, the best thing to do is to find a company that makes vacuum formed windows and they'll actually make them that are, you know, half a mil thick at best, a third mil, quarter mil thick instead of those big chunky plates. And Jason just simply asked the question, he says, why would you ever put windows in? It only gets in the way of what you're trying to view. So unless I'm specifically trying to recreate chips or scratches or weathering like I did on the Seamus car over there, yeah, I'm pretty much just going to leave them out because I put too much effort into detailing the interiors to hide them away behind plastic. <laughs> so I appreciated that advice. And, uh, well, we'll see how it flies in an IPMS event. Because I'm bringing a bunch of stuff that does not, in fact, have windows. So I've got that in there. This is a big old hunky chunky thing. So I'm going to roll it to one side. I'm going to roll it to the other. Blow on it a bit, obviously. And that's really to help settle things down. There we are. So we've got that nice dust line in the back. Looking good and dirty through here. Got our dust line through here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna thicken that up a bit. At least right there. Oh yeah, you can see it really right through here. As I get it wet again. It's looking good. Very nice contrast now on the pieces down here. So let's do a little bit of work uh, with the same colors. Just stick it on here like that's going to do me any good. But this time, um, I'm going to focus on the interior of this. Now, I'm going to go a little nuts on the interior because, well, this is the dirty part. Uh, but that means I start by stirring up, wiping. You see all that pigment coming out of my brush? And in this case, I am using the hunk of chunk of big burning brush. And I'm going to just load up. And that's the back. So. And then, blow on it. Get a bit more, hopefully isopropyl-y. Woo! Load up. Hit it, hit it. When you're blowing on your isopropyl, remember to inhale away. You don't want to start taking big uh, huffs of uh, isopropyl. It's not recommended. So now those are nice and dusty. So what I'm going to do is come back to my Q-tip and intentionally, oops, let's start on this side where it's more dry. Intentionally try to rub some of that out of there. Got to be gentle because, again, the isopropyl is going to leave that paint damp. And you see a little bit of red on that first one. 
So it needs to be dry before you come back. Because, yeah, you can see the pooling here. I don't want that pooling, so let's see if we can get rid of it. Nice. But I do get it in the recess. I get it along that ridge. All right, so I've got isopropyl on this end, so I'm changing ends. And I'm going to put a big piece of wood in here as well. So I'm not worried about the ejector pins or anything like that. Not right now. All right, so those are the wheel wells. And again, this is going to have wood. I'll keep finding more and more of it. Pretty soon I'll have enough for the whole truck. And I will probably print my set of uh, landscaping tools to put in here, too, and make it truer to form. So I'm missing one more piece of wood. So, but we'll have the wood in there for the wooden deck. And I'll do my usual tricks with dirt and leaves, and I'll put uh, probably a paint circle stain, but maybe only on one of them this time. It's one of my favorite tricks. Or effects, I should say. It's one of my... It's just kind of ubiquitous for me in the back of old trucks. Like, I... In my lifetime, I think about the number of trucks I've seen that have that, uh, you know, paint ring in the back of the deck. And, uh, well, I'm honestly trying to remember one that doesn't. <laughs> All right. Now, much more selectively, we're going to come around to the door of the deck. Start applying our dust. I'm actually going to blow on that before I go on. Pretty much all it takes to dry it at least enough for me to start to see how much color is coming and in fact it's drying very rapidly now so i'm going to leave this on camera and the hope that you'll be able to see the transition particularly over here i'll blow on it a bit again so remember it's going to be much lighter when it's dry so see how as it dried it really started to show up like a big yellow outline and that's good. That's what we want. Uh, but that's why, as I was getting ready to apply another layer, um, I realized I should let this one dry and take a look, is you really want to be careful not to over-apply. It's much easier to add than take away. So now I'm hitting like the spots around the handle here. I'm going to hit the holes in the back of the truck carefully pulling down there. I have to ask him at some point what all those were for. Like, what was in there at some point? Because his... The, the gate to his boot is just covered in, in these little holes. Basically replicated, so all the ones here are actually on the reference truck. And I, I generally can't fathom why. All right, so I'm going to come around to the side, let that dry, check the comments. Hey, no new comments. That's good and bad. It's good because it means I haven't missed you, and it's bad because it means I don't have any questions. Do remember that if there's uh, something you'd like to see co covered in an episode, uh, speak up, let me know. Uh, if I can't cover it now, I will aim to uh, devote a workbench Wednesday, or at least a portion of one, uh, to your question uh, or technique so that I... Uh, get you covered. Uh, it is my favorite part of the job. I really love answering uh, hobby questions for folks.
for new hobbyists, folks that are coming at this new, or at least to the show new, I will also add that uh, uh, one of the uh, uh, ways that the, the great painters get great is by getting and giving feedback, uh, solicited <laughs> uh, feedback to each other. Um, yeah, I mean, I there are uh, I could list half a dozen names right this minute of uh, people who do weathering um, that I look up to, and I love the fact that they're willing to to talk, um, to share their ideas and techniques, to share their feedback, uh, including their praise when it's warranted. To say, hey, that's that's impressive. Good job. Um, but asking questions here is one of the best ways to pick up. Ooh, yeah, sorry about that, Jess. Like I've said, uh, over-application really is the easiest way to be sad about your pigments. Adding this just in the corners here. I'm going to let that dry before I do anything else with that. But I want to get more, a little bit more here on the back of the driver's side, whereas on the passenger side, again, I'm going to come back, getting a heavy load of pigment in here. Letting it run down. Gravity and capillary action. Just a little bit in the spots there. Just a little bit. Doop, doop. Oh, too little. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Just a little bit of yellow dust. There we go. So between the pigments and the isopropyl, we've also gotten a nice uh, oxidized paint effect going on here. That is one of the things, again, to remember, particularly with the isopropyl, is it can go so sideways. Um, you've got to be careful um, and willing to, to work with the results. Um, I'm very happy with that. Uh, I like the oxidized paint look. It's one of the things I'm actually going for. Um, and I find that doing it, when I can get it to work this way, I get a more realistic finish than I would from, uh, say, adding uh, light colors of oil over the top. Because in this case, it is actually fading the paint. We are, of course, coming up on the end of this Workbench Wednesday. Always a disappointment. Um, I'm glad that I got to do a full two-hour run today. Uh, I know the last couple we've had to call it a bit early for various reasons and other stuff going on. Um, oh, yeah, here we go. Look at that. And part of that is the pooling from the isopropyl, which is why I just put those two big pools back here. That's right. We didn't follow up on that. Ha -ha. Let's do one more time, this time with that pigment. I'm so distractible. I just can't stop. It's rust. There we are. So see, starting to get those good natural looks, especially by letting gravity do so much of the work for you. Uh, you do have to be willing to accept that it could go sideways. Now, of course, how would I fix that? Well, I'd come in with some sponge. And I'd go boop, 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 boop. A little trickier because you're putting it over dry pigment. But there you go. I can even add depth back in this way. I'm going to add a little bit of the rust again right over here. Too much. Wash some of that away. There we go. So that'll dry and the pigments will show up again. But that's what I mean. Small sections, one little bit of pigment at a time. Uh, we're working in little tiny areas. 
Uh, but in terms of the progress today, in just two hours, let's take a look at what we've got. Uh, redid, pretty much redid the rust on the roof of this thing. Um, didn't like it, and you can already see how the uh, engine rust, translucent color, has already done a wonderful job of oxidizing that white and really uh, fading it out. Um, Oh, hey, Vitruvian Goblin, thank you very much for getting a set of the weathering acrylics in the mail today. Uh, glad you got it in the post, and uh, yeah, we look forward to hearing what you think about them. Uh, hopefully being able to see some of that in action has, uh, well, been uh, uh, a prompt to get you using them today. So uh, please, yeah, share some photos with us on Facebook. Uh, let me see what you're doing. I always love to see what people are doing with the paints. Um, but we uh, pretty much redid the rust here, made it a, a lot more stripey. Oh, hi, Pooch. That's right, the door's still open. Um, and again, the uh, engine rust, which is our translucent pink, um, did a great job of oxidizing the white. You can see some of the stripes through here that I uh, created with that. Uh, we used pigments. Uh, well, let's come back over here. So we used the pigments to define this area. Also put uh, color on the uh, runners. Got some pigment here on the big old... Uh, Big old dent, showed off the scratches. And on the back, we got our pigment through here. See that nice wash through here, how that actually did a great job of discoloring the white here and here. On the sides, it did a good job of oxidizing the strip for us. And I can actually clean some of that off with a Q-tip if I decide that's not what I want. It's still salvageable, I'm gonna leave, see? but do want. <laughs> so I'll leave it be for now. We'll just have that little section that's cleaned off. Also interesting to have little sections that are clearly cleaned off. You know, the, the wash me on the back of a car, for instance, is an interesting thing on the back of a, uh, or a, a removing uh, the dirt. Um, so showed off the scratches, but now I'm really happy with how the uh, gate is turning out here. Um, just with the two colors of pigment so far. It's a really simple application. We've done it with isopropyl washes. Um, again, there are other safer ways to apply that, uh, but my preferred method, um, and I'd come back with the pigment fixer, of course, and lock it down later. Uh, but yeah, so the passenger side is the one with a really messed up door. The drivers and passenger sides look much different in terms of their weathering. To reflect how the vehicle would be used, uh, you know, out in the wild, free and free and in the wild, as it were. Uh, but now we've started to get the dust and muck into the back of this thing, uh, so that when we get the wood deck down, it looks nice. And it's coming together, and that's just uh, you know a couple hours of the pigment, uh, even faster uh, when you're not spending time uh, jumping between uh, projects and helping out your son and whatnot. Uh, but hey, I always appreciate uh, having you here. Uh, as a reminder, if it's your first time watching, uh, well, even if you've been with us before, uh, please remember to hit uh, like, subscribe, the little bell, whatever all the things you have to do these days. And of course, if you want to see regular updates, uh, please hit us up at facebook.com uh, slash secretweaponminiatures. And uh, you'll get to see a lot more previews. We get uh, coupons and stuff up there. Um, and heck, why not sign up for our newsletter, which is the best place to get discounts and coupons from Secret Weapon Miniatures. Uh, as always, thank you for watching. I wish you happy hobbying. And if you have any questions, please send them my way. Answering your questions is my favorite part of the job. And I look forward to seeing you next week. Same time, same place. Have fun in the interim.